All right. In the last video, I showed you just how to set up Miner Gate and get it started. So now let's look at some of the more advanced options that you can do. And one of the first things you can do is you can benchmark your hardware and see kind of how good they think your hardware is. So I'm going to show you that. So click on this little icon here. It looks like a little CPU processor. And then click Start Benchmark and just wait for it to finish. I'm going to speed this up so it doesn't look quite so boring. Okay, so it finished and it's going to give you a score and it's going to give you a number of stars based on how good it thinks you are. And then it's going to show you how much money it thinks you can make extra with using this computer. Um, if you click down here at the bottom, you can actually see the description of how they come up with that number. And for now, we can just click start mining. All right, so now we've got our dashboard here. And what I notice sometimes is that after I do a benchmark and then um, start the start this, it sometimes seems to go faster than if I don't do the benchmark. All right, so here now you see the, the CPU mining. This is the central processing unit of your computer. And then here we have GPU mining, which is the graphics card of your computer. Now, if you have a mainstream computer that you bought from, say, Dell or wherever, it might not have a graphics card. So it will only have a graphics card if you specifically bought one with it or if you have like a higher end machine or if you have a gaming computer. This is my gaming computer and um, it's got a five-year-old processor in it. So this is actually quite slow right here, but the GPU is fairly new. I had to upgrade because my old computer, my old graphics card was just getting too old and too slow. So um, it's not the best but it was okay. I think that cost me about $200. Anyway, so you can see 600 is 500 to 600 um, hashes per second is much, much faster than what I'm getting on the CPU side. And this is with Monero. If you click on this little hammer right here, then you can see all of the different um, available currencies that you can mine. So right now, uh, Monero is the most profitable and that's what it's going to start doing. And then you can also do what's called concurrent mining where with either um, Monteverde coin or um, Phantom coin. And you can see that over here. XDN would be the Monteverde and FCN is Phantom coin. So you might as well use your merged mining because supposedly it doesn't actually lower your uh, hash counts. And if you look underneath this, you can see the extra hashes there. All right, so at this point, I'm going to actually close out the computer, of course, close out this program and restart it so I can show you what it looks like when you actually log in. All right, so when you first start it up, you'll get this screen. And when you click extended mode, then it'll ask you to sign in with the password that you create, that you used for the account you created with Minergate. So go ahead and enter that password. Okay, so now it looks like this when, once you've logged in, um, which looks exactly the same as before. However, now um, you have an additional tab called the wallet tab. And this is where you can withdraw the money that has been accumulating in your account. And at the moment, you can see I don't actually have any because I've only been using this for a very short time um, on this account. So you can withdraw money here and this changely right here, let's say that you're um, mining this XDN coin, which is not highly traded and it's probably not going to be worth a lot of money anytime soon. So you want to change that over to, you want to exchange it to something like um, Bitcoin or Litecoin to store your, your cryptocurrency gold that you've been mining so hard. So in this case, what you can do is click on the changely button. So withdraw, we'll withdraw it to a wallet of your choosing. So right now, as we speak, the money that is here that has been mined is not technically mine. It's technically miner gates. It's being held for me in my account, but it's held in their wallet. If you want to move it to your wallet, then what you need to do is withdraw the money. And you do that just by clicking the withdraw button. Um, and so notice over here it says I have zero Aeon, but I have this many unconfirmed um, 
transactions. If we click on Monero, you can see I've got more unconfirmed transactions. And if we come down, we click show all. So now if you see FCN, um, with FCN, I actually have more, unconf more unconfirmed coin. So when you, when you set up your um, mining, you'll notice that there's a reward method right here, PPLNS versus PPS. So if you choose PPLNS, then you're not going to get your coin immediately. You're only going to get your coin once those transactions that you've mined have been confirmed. And that can take anywhere from a couple hours to a couple days, depending on how fast your computer is and depending on how many miners there are in the pool for that particular currency. So um, at the moment, you see I've got an unconfirmed balance, but I don't actually have any confirmed that I can withdraw at this moment in time. I also want to address one little troubleshooting thing that you may run into. Sometimes you're like, well, my, I know my computer has a graphics card, but it's not being um, recognized. What you want to do then is go to logs and then open the minor gate logs. And if you're using an NVIDIA card, it'll see something like number of OpenCL platform, found OpenCL platform, NVIDIA, CUDA, blah, 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 blah. If you see an error there, you have an error because you don't have anything found, say um, error 35, for example, on my laptop, I was getting error 35. And the reason for that is that my graphics card drivers were too old. So update your graphics card drivers, try it again. And one thing to note is that the logs don't go away. So if you're always looking at the top, you're looking at old, old log entries. You've got to scroll all the way down to the bottom so that you can find out the correct ones. So just to be aware, if you have that problem, look in your logs. If it's error 35, update your graphics drivers, try it again. If it's a different kind of error, then you're going to need to use a little Google Foo to figure out what the issue is. All right, at this time, we're going to look at the dashboard and we're going to look a little bit more detail at what you can do with the dashboard. So now we're inside MinerGate's dashboard and we're going to take a look at what the dashboard looks like. So here you have your account status and at the top left, you have your account balance, which can be um, denominated in Bitcoin, US dollars, or euros. So at the moment you can see that I have 0 0.0000032 Bitcoin, which is worth at the moment, um, oh, half a cent. And it also tells you that what you're currently mining. And so I've got two currencies that are currently being mined and in Bitcoin they're worth this and in US dollars they're worth. Hey, look at that. I am almost up to a dollar. Um, this is a new account. So that's how things are going. Now over here, you've got all of your different coins you can be mining and you can customize this little dashboard for you. So let's say that you're, you're uh, mining Zcash. You can move it upwards so that it's at the top. Um, I'm using Monero and Phantom Coin at the moment, so I put those at the top. That way I don't have to scroll all the way down to see them. You've got all the list of all of your different coins that you could be mining. And let's take a look at what you can see for each one. So first you get the name, then you get the amount of it that you have in your account, and then you have its value in Bitcoin, US dollars, or Euros. You can trade it on, um, hit BTC, or you can change it with Changely. So those are exchanges that you can use to exchange whatever you've mined for another currency. So let's say that you're mining Monero because your computer is better at it and you think it's more profitable at the moment, but you don't want to keep your coin in Monero. You can exchange it with either of those services. You can also buy it directly with money, which is a new option. And then you can withdraw whatever this balance is over here using the withdraw button. Um, if you click the little down, you can transfer it to another person in uh, minor gate. So transfer, you're going to need to know their email address, click the transfer button, and then you can transfer the money to them. Withdraw is going to bring up something like this. Um, 
no, it's not going to let me do it because I don't have any confirmed at the moment. Um, but what it will do is it will allow you to withdraw the money to a wallet of your choosing. It can be your wallet or it can be someone else's wallet. Now, right here, it tells us how many kilo, kilo hashes per second we currently have. And if you want to find out how much you're able to make, you can take that little kilo hash button or kilo hash number and plug it into the calculator up at the top right here. So this is our current hash per second. Um, it tells us our status, how many workers there are, and then it tells us how many unconfirmed and how many total mined shares we have. A uh, bad share is a share that was sent too late, and so someone else already confirmed that particular block. Down here we have the two different fee structures. So again, if you're going to be mining for a significant amount of time, you're better off using this one but you're not going to get your shares immediately. So if you're going to just do this for a day or two, just to check it out, use the PPS. It's going to, the miner gate will charge a higher fee for the service. So you're not going to get quite as much coin, but you're going to get the coin immediately. So you'll notice that I have a little bit of unconfirmed Eon because I stopped mining Eon. Well, it's never ever going to be confirmed. So unless I start mining it again. Uh, if this tells you how many people are, how many, the um, hashing power of the total pool of Minergate that's mining Monero at the moment and the number of miners. So you can see that a lot of people right now are mining this as opposed to, say, Bitcoin Gold, where you've only got a fewer number of miners. And then you can see in the world what it currently is. And then you can see who the top five users are. So that is pretty much it for all of these are the same. So that's pretty much it for um, what you can do with the, with the dashboard here. Now let's take this just 1000 kilohertz per second number. It's going to fluctuate over time. Um, but let's, at the moment it's 1.003. So let's use that. Click the calculator button. And what you can do now is we're going to come to crypto note because that's what Monero is. It's a crypto note currency. And if you don't know that up front, well, just keep clicking until you find the currency that you're interested in. So you should mine, say, for about an hour or so. Check what your hash is, and then you can put that in here. So 1.003, and that was a kilo hash per second. You can change this to be whatever unit is currently being shown to you in your dashboard. And then it's going to tell you that with that 1.003, in one hour, you can make approximately 0 0.0001 Bitcoin. In 24 hours, you can make that amount. And in one week, you can make that amount. You're like, well, you know, I don't know what that means. So if you click US dollars, what that'll tell you is in one day, you should be able to make about $3 worth of Monero. And in one week, you can make about $22 of Monero. So let's say that you're going to do this for one month. In one month, that would be giving you um, four weeks. I'd give you about $86, $88 of Monero. Now, if you don't have a lot of time, if you have a lot of free time on your computer, uh, maybe you'll have it do it at night. This is a way you can get started. You can figure out what what these cryptocurrencies are. You can exchange one for another. You can maybe even try and buy something on on eBay or not eBay. On um, you can even buy something local on Craigslist with Bitcoin. Yeah. So just as a way to get started, this is an easy way to do it. Now, one of the questions is. Um, is it going to be worth your electricity cost? And the answer is, I don't know. Um, however, it probably will be profitable based on on um, electricity cost if you put it into a coin that's going to appreciate. Now, which one is going to appreciate? It's a good question. Personally, I think that Bitcoin and Litecoin and Ethereum are all going to appreciate in the relatively short term and the long term. And then it still remains to be seen whether um, something like Dash or Monero or Zcash is going to make a break and become the kind of the, the future de facto currency. I'll do an entire uh, video on this I, on this question, but for now, the answer is 
probably if you're just taking its um, most profitable mining suggestion, which right now is Monero, and then converting that into either Bitcoin or Litecoin or Ethereum, I think that you'll probably be happy with your choices over the long term. And by long term, I'm talking about a couple months to a year. Now, if you're just going to do this for a day or two and then stop, well, it might never be worth anything, but it will still you get a little bit of coin. And then once you've got that little bit of coin, say $3 worth of coin, you can now use it to just play with it and see how this stuff works. Because seeing how it works is really the most important thing in terms of getting started, especially if you don't have much money to begin with.